Good evening, dear Kuwait television viewers, and welcome to another new episode of your weekly program, Kuwait in 30 Minutes. The English News and Political Programs Department has prepared a variety of reports that highlight the main events that have recently taken place across Kuwait. Our committed team of reporters is constantly engaged in numerous events with the objective of keeping you, dear viewers, aware of the latest information, regulations and policies. Our aim is to have you obtain information on the latest developments at the local scene. So stay tuned for more coming your way this evening. In our first story tonight, the Romanian embassy in Kuwait recently celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Romanian reunion and the establishment of the modern Romanian Republic. Romania now is also celebrating that it will be the president of the European Union for the upcoming year. Here is more in this report by Saleh Abid. The Romanian Embassy celebrated the 100th anniversary of the Great Romanian Reunion and the establishment of the current Romanian nation. The, the members of the Protocol Department from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs have attended this event to celebrate this happy occasion. Here is more with this report. This is an important uh, anniversary for uh, Romania because 100 years ago, all the Romanians united in one uh, single country, uh, the Kingdom of Romania. The date is 1st of December 1918. Uh, so we have uh, 100 years of United Romania as of uh, this year. Uh, also we have 55 years of uh, friendly relations between Romania and the state of Kuwait. And uh, we marked uh, this uh, friendship uh, with uh, the visit of the Romanian Prime Minister to Kuwait in October, 21st of October this year. And uh, also on the economic side, we had a Romanian uh, businessman delegation coming with the president of the Romanian Chamber of Commerce to Kuwait yesterday. So they had uh, meetings and talks and business to business meetings uh, with the Kuwaiti businessmen and uh, investors. It's, it's my honor. I'm, I'm so happy to, to attend this uh, celebration. It's, uh, it's the, the, the celebration of uh, uh, 100 year of the, the reunion of the Kingdom of uh, Romania. And uh, uh, most of the ambassadors and country, different country, European country are invited here. I can see many people. Uh, the, the, uh, His Excellency, the ambassador, also uh, delivered a speech and he talked about uh, uh, Romania through all 100 years from now um, uh, people are uh, talking together about the the, the achievements of, uh, of Romania and uh, I, I, I was really surprised about the nice film uh, the nature the t tourism in Romania I believe everything is okay today it seems uh, they have a nice celebration Romania is a European nation with a great historical background that dates back as far as around the year 270 and it is also known as one of Europe's most scenic countries that is located in the Balkan Peninsula and facing the Black Sea. Today is the 100th anniversary of the establishment of Romania. This is Sahir Abedi reporting to you for quite in 30 minutes. The UNHCR recently hosted an event to honor Mr. Abdul Wahab al Badr, the General Director of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development. The UNHCR hosted this honoring ceremony in appreciation of Kuwait's role for helping other Arab nations, especially the ones who need assistance and aid. Here is more in this report by Saleh Rabbit. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees hosted an honoring ceremony that was sponsored by the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, 
Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Habad Al Sabah. The event was dedicated to honor the General Director of the Kuwait Fund for Arab Economic Development, Mr. Abdul Wahab Al Badr. Here's more of this report. Participate in this today evening, uh, the ceremony of honoring Mr. Abdul Wahab Al Badr, the Director General of uh, Kuwait Fund for Arab Development uh, for Arab Economic uh, Development. Uh, this actual event shows the appreciation of the UN system by the United Nations uh, High Commissioner for Refugees by honoring His Excellency Mr. Al Badr, who is representing the Kuwait the State of Kuwait on their humanitarian leadership. We all know that Kuwait was honored by the Secretary General three years back as the uh, global humanitarian uh, uh, leadership, and uh, we are all together here working together in supporting the refugees, the IDBs, the uh, temporary contractual laborers uh, to uh, support the national agenda in providing humanitarian assistance for people in need. I'm really truly honored to be here tonight as the UN High Commissioner, High Commission for Refugees uh, honors Estez uh, Badr of the Kuwait Fund. Uh, Kuwait has played an enormous role under the vision and leadership of of His Highness the Emir, uh, as you know, one of the great humanitarian leaders of uh, the world, and especially in the area of helping the, uh, those Syrians who have had the great misfortune. We, what we witnessed today was um, a decoration or a ceremony to honor uh, the work of the Kuwait Fund for Arabic Development and his, its, um, his chairman, its director, Abdul Wahab um, Al Badr. Um, this is uh, uh, by, by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees here in Kuwait. Um, this is a, a ceremony, an award, an honor that is very well received, uh, very well um, uh, founded. Um, the work at, that the Kuwait Fund uh, is doing internationally, be it in humanitarian aid or be it in um, development aid is actually um, exemplary. Uh, we are very proud to cooperate with uh, the Kuwait Fund in uh, projects abroad. We want to intensify the cooperation. During the ceremony, a short film was played that demonstrated Kuwait Fund for Arabic Economic Development alongside the UNHCR in providing aid to the Syrian refugees in northern Iraq. Officials of international organizations and ambassadors all acknowledge Kuwait's role in providing aid to those needing help and providing it with urgency. Today we are here for the UN HCR event for honoring the Kuwait Fund for Arabic Economic Development. Sahil Abadi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. And coming up next, the 8th Annual Conference for Effective Partnership and Information Sharing recently kicked off. During the conference, the International Islamic Charitable Organization, or the IICO, set a goal of feeding a million people annually to defeat hunger worldwide. Here is more with this report by our reporter Saleh Abedi. The Minister of Justice, the Minister of Awqaf and Islamic Affairs of Kuwait, Dr. Fahed Al-Afasi, gave a speech at the 8th Annual Conference for Effective Partnership and Information Sharing. The Minister applauded the pioneering role of His Highness Damir, Sheikh Sabah Al-Ahmed Al-Jabar Al-Sabah, in formulating a comprehensive human rights organization in which national efforts are united in a speech at the opening of the conference. The state of Kuwait has always been in the forefront to deliver assistance to the people in need. Okay. I would uh, like to take this opportunity to express United Nations gratitude to the His Highness Amir and the people of Kuwait for continued uh, generosity for the much needed humanitarian assistance globally and for supporting this initiative. The state of Kuwait has provided since 2014 over uh, 1.4 billion uh, US dollars to support humanitarian response globally. Excellences, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing a situation today with unprecedented level of need and the demands on the humanitarian system. In 2018, 
some 21 uh, million uh, 34 uh, people need humanitarian assistance and protection from 26 million one decade ago. The conference, patronized by His Highness Tamir Sheikh Sabah Ahmed Jabr al Sabah, was attended by a number of representative associations involved in humanitarian and charitable work, both locally and internationally. On his part, chairperson of the International Islamic Charity Organization, the IICO, Dr. Adal al Matouk, stated that Kuwait is the source of charitable work and that this conference aims to unify humanitarian works in opposing hunger around the world through the course of setting a target of feeding 1 million hungry people annually. Al Yarmouk Cultural Center recently hosted a memorable recital titled Women and War by Verika Gumuza and Harriet Bushman. The recital marks the inventory of the end of World War I. It tells also the stories of war through the music composed across the globe, but also across different times in history. Audience praised the performance by the talented women who successfully conveyed the story through the authentic of art. Reporter Renwa Jabouri brings us more in this report. The recital Woman and War to End All Wars unfolds threading the music of World War II and more recent history. It shifts the focus from predominantly masculine narratives of war to the lens of female experiences with sons of love and losses that highlight war's universal themes. And tonight, uh, my pianist, uh, Harriet Bushman, and I will perform uh, a recital about women and war. We will mark the centenary of the First World War, uh, but we will shift the focus and we will sing the songs about, uh, composed around the globe and through different times to highlight the shared experiences uh, uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the universal themes about war and losses. Uh, every space and every audience is different. This is a lovely, um, uh, a lovely space, and I will have a chance to speak between the songs to explain uh, to the audience what is uh, happening more. So I think that will help uh, create the atmosphere. The recital also casts a spotlight on several remarkable women performers who used songs as a platform to command public voice, thus fittingly marking another centenary, that of the women's suffrage movement in the UK. I think that um, some of the songs we're doing this evening are particularly poignant. Um, I've written two, uh, one to do with loss and one to do with the mother getting older. And I think all of us can relate in one way or the other to one of those. And um, there are many uh, composers who have written in response to war. And those songs are are what we're talk talking about this evening but not all of them are sad some of them are very humorous and fun and up so there are many ways of looking at tragedy you not, not, not only desperation you can also um, find a way to find a way through it as we all have to do we all survive after all the performance conveyed a great deal of emotion and connotations about woman and war through elegance talent and passion Woman and War Recital was a true gem that the audiences took great delight while thoroughly being entertained. An inspiring musical concert titled Woman and War. From Ali Adamu Cultural Center, I'm Genwa Jaburi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. Al Yarmouk Cultural Center recently hosted a lecture titled Real or Imaginary Miniatures as a Source of Knowledge for the History of Islamic Art, delivered by Professor Giovanni Curatola. Professor Curatola is a professor at the University of Uden in Italy and is the author of more than 100 publications on Islamic art. Giovanni Curatola has curated exhibitions as Islamic Art in Italy and Shamans and the Briefs of the Steps. He is also the editor of the Art and Architecture of Mesopotamia and the co-author of the Art and Architecture of Persia, both published by Abbeville Press. Reporter Ghenwa Jabouri brings us more in this report.
In his intriguing lecture, Giovanni addressed the issue of the arts of the book, especially miniatures, which are an important branch of art in the Muslim culture since the beginning of Islamic art studies. Today I will speak about uh, Islamic miniatures because I want to show how, in a way, a miniature should be seen and um, how much we can learn by miniatures and uh, Islamic art. Here is uh, Dar al-Thar al-Islamiyah, is the house of uh, culture, Islamic culture, and I am very proud to be here and to give this uh, little speech for my friends in Kuwait. The lecturer intrigued the audience with his vast knowledge of the history of Islamic art and his fascination on the topic which resonated through his detailed lecture which delivered insightful information on the history of Islamic art. Islamic art is one of the most important arts in the world is, uh, because it's part of a large and big civilization. I myself come from Florence, from the Renaissance town of Florence, and this summer we had a very nice exhibition of what was Islam and Florence. So I am very close to Islamic culture and Islamic arts, and I think that Islamic art is the best messenger of peace all around the world. Giovanni Caratola is the author of numerous books on Islamic art, including The Art and Architecture of Persia and The Art and Architecture of Ancient Mesopotamia. Tonight's lecture addressed the fascinating world of Islamic art. From Ali Aramuk Cultural Centre, I'm Geno Jaburi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. And in the coming report, Kuwait Digital Transformation Conference, an exhibition was recently held under the patronage of Director General of the Central Agency for Information Technology, Kusai Shotti. The exhibitors included a variety of companies and government entities from the telecom sector. Visitors also were from the individuals in related areas who enjoyed an informative session. More from our reporter Najla Sadiq in this report. A conference and exhibition titled Kuwait Digital Transformation under the patronage of the Director General of the Central Agency of Information Technology, Qusayya Shatli, took place at the Al Hashimi Hall of the Radisson Blue Hotel, where exhibitors included both government and private sector organizations and experts from Kuwait and abroad of various industry sectors. It was an opportunity to exchange beneficial information on the topic of Kuwait's drive towards digital transformation. Visitors were delighted for the opportunity to engage with the representatives of such knowledgeable caliber. Digital transformation is a journey for a country and for companies and for people. Uh, started worldwide and we are a bit delay in Kuwait but such events will improve and speed the digital transformation education to the people. As we all know digital transformation is having different pillars e-health, e-education, uh, IoT, cloud, 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 quality net being an ISB and ICT. We started our journey in digital transformation Today in the cloud we are announcing the first cloud contact center in Kuwait and I can claim in the Gulf region where you can have your own contact center for with altitude, fully uh, working solutions with zero cost, in, uh, very fast deployments. We have cloud PPX, we have cloud DDoS mitigation, we have cloud VPS. So such events will help the country to go to cloud. You know, cloud is Digital transformation is a journey, it's not a product. And, and, and people worldwide today are moving out of the offices and day-to-day -day and paperwork. With the current events pertaining to the implementation of the new digitized and internet-reliant platforms, in-house expertise is identified as this smart generation roadmap is steadily in motion. Today uh, we are witnessing one of the most important events, not in just specialized people and all kind of people from all aspects is digital transformation as you can see our life has shifted uh, and changed by the real world and the virtual world 
Uh, what's on our mind is on Twitter. What's in our tummy is on Instagram. And what we are doing in our life is every day on Snapchat. Uh, this is a very small example of how our life changing by mixing the real life and the virtual life. And take this to a next level when you talk about professionalism, when you talk about organization, when you talk about government, when you talk about private sector. Everything is converting to digital. And everything is changing to be digital, which is faster, reliable, and easy and friendly user. Kuwait Digital Transformation Conference and Exhibition delightfully provided an ideal venue for all presenters, exhibitors and visitors to discuss topics related to the rapidly advancing and spreading industry, telecommunications. Kuwait Diabetes Society recently organized an event titled World Diabetes Day 2018 at the Marina Crescent in collaboration with the Kuwait Medical Association under the sponsorship of Novo Nordisk, a global healthcare company with more than 90 years of innovation and leadership in diabetes care. The event aimed at promoting awareness about diabetes, how people diagnosed with diabetes can manage it through improving their quality of life and how people can work towards prevention of diabetes through healthy lifestyle choices. Reporter Renwa Jabouri brings us more in this report. Organized by the Kuwait Diabetes Society in collaboration with the Kuwait Medical Society, an event titled World Diabetes Day 2018 took place at the Marina Crescent. World Diabetes Day is observed globally on November 14 and features a number of diabetes awareness campaigns to raise awareness about diabetes with this year's theme, The Family and Diabetes, to highlight how diabetes affects not just an individual, but the entire family. Kuwait, uh, you know, there's a big prevalence of diabetes in Kuwait. Uh, the prevalence of diabetes, according to the International Diabetes Federation, is about 15 to 17 percent. So, you know, it's a, quite a common disease in Kuwait. We have several types of diabetes and all of them are very common. Most of them have to do with the increase in, uh, you know, in the uh, weight uh, of uh, our population and the population of people who live here as well. So it's quite a problem. And this is why we're doing this World Diabetes Day event to raise awareness awareness regarding diabetes. So what we have here is uh, we have uh, the, the Kuwait Diabetes Society World Diabetes Day event. We're in Marina Crescent. It's a beautiful day. It's the 30th of November and our sponsors are Novo Nordisk. We also have dietitians with us from NutriCare volunteer group. What we have is we have weight and height, we have blood glucose checking, blood, pr blood pressure checking. We have a whole team of doctors. We have a whole team of dietitians and nurses just here for anyone who needs anything. Diabetes Day hosted booths, blood glucose and blood pressure testing and screening and medical assessments, in addition to enlightening visitors on how they can make better dietary habits to prevent the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. Um, we are here today to promote awareness about type 1 diabetes. Um, we're here to explain to people the differences between type 1 and type 2 diabetes and to make them aware. Um, we're also uh, working together uh, with Kuwait Diabetes Society uh, on a type 1 diabetes uh, support group uh, for girls, which is basically um, to gather people and to build a type 1 diabetes community where um, they are able to support, uh, learn and uh, share from each other's experiences. The event witnessed a large number of people keen in getting screened for diabetes. Many families were also seeking advice from medical representatives on how to prevent a diabetes 2 diagnosis and how to make better choices regarding food and physical activities to lead healthier lives for them and their families. World Diabetes Day 2018, helping society to lead healthier lives. From the Marina Crescent, I'm Genra Jaburi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes.
And in our last report for tonight, a session titled The End of Violence Against Women recently took place at Kuwait University Shuwaik campus. This session addressed issues pertaining to what Kuwait is doing about the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, known as CEDAW. The discussion was chaired by Head of Women's Research and Studies Center at Kuwait University, Dr. Lubna Qadi and Dr. Ammar Bahbahani. The discussion was attended by academics, students of law and social sciences disciplines. Reporter Ghinwa Jabouri has more in this report. Eliminating violence against women was the core message discussed in a recent session that took place at Kuwait University chaired by Head of Women's Research and Study Centre Dr. Lubna al -Qadi, with the participation of Kuwait University students eager to achieve progress in gender equality. Uh, these activities uh, from uh, two days ago have been about the 16 days of activism. It's about uh, CDAO, Eliminating Violence Against Women, was our session today. Earlier uh, on Monday, we had a session with uh, other uh, NGOs on women and violence. We had Abolish 153, we had Ethar, and we had some lawyers. In other words, we're trying to raise awareness what uh, civil society, the government is doing about eliminating violence, what work needs to be done whether it's women in leadership, whether it's uh, some laws, whether it's the nationality law, etc. So uh, today I was really talking about CEDAW, Kuwait's position on CEDAW, what it has done after signing CEDAW, how we have got our political rights, but we have some other reservations, and in general, why uh, the public needs to be aware, especially women, of their rights so that if they ask for it, they'll get it. If they're silent and they do not break the silent, silence, this will continue. The discussion was aimed at raising awareness about what civil society and the government is doing about eliminating violence and what work needs to be done to ensure women are receiving their rights. Uh, the reason I called students from the College of Law and the College of Social Science is that we, we need to spread awareness because these people will be later on in decision making. They are the voters of the, of the next election. They need to know what they should look for as far as those who support their rights or those who are not women with women's rights. They need to know what their rights are and they need to ask for change. Dr. Lubna noted that there has been great improvement in Kuwait regarding women's rights, adding that the government has shown its inclination in furthering gender equality. She further remarked that we have come a long way, but we still have a long way to go in achieving gender equality. Students participated in a very interesting discussion today, End Violence Against Women. From Kuwait University, I'm Genwa Jaburi reporting to you for Kuwait in 30 minutes. Well, this brings us to the conclusion of tonight's episode of Kuwait in 30 minutes. We hope to see you again same time next week. Our highly dedicated team of correspondents is constantly out on the field searching for reports that matter most to you. Thank you for joining us tonight and see you next week with more exclusive reports. Have a good night.